Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today I am back with a review of a brand new gaming console. It is called the Evercade Versus, and this is made by a company called Blaze Entertainment. A little over a year ago, I covered the original Evercade handheld that was released, and like many people at the time, I was like skeptical. I was like, okay, this is either madness or genius to put out a system like this. And it turns out that it was genius. I mean, it sold pretty well. At least it seems like it because it got a ton of support. And here they are back with the sequel to it. And it's tied to the handheld in many ways. It's almost like a companion piece to the handheld because it plays almost all of the same cartridges. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here. So let's go ahead and unbox this and talk about what it does, as well as show you a bunch of games running on it. But in the interest of full disclosure, I do wanna mention that this was sent to me for review. However, no one is reviewing this video before it goes live and all of the opinions are my own. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now you'll notice that this is the premium pack which sells for $130. Now this comes with two game packs as well as two controllers, but you can save a little bit of money if you wanna get the starter pack which is only $100, and that comes with one game pack and one controller. Opening up the box, you see the console on top, and again, I should probably be very clear, this is not a handheld, this is a gaming system, a standalone one that you put you know, on your television. It just happens to also play most of the game packs that the handheld supports. And it's a small, compact machine. You see it here next to my Nintendo Switch, so it's definitely a little bit thicker than the Switch, but it's not quite as wide. And then here it is next to the original handheld. So again, a nice form factor, probably fit in pretty much everybody's game room. Now, one of the coolest things about this, and I think it surprised a lot of people when they announced it, and I'll open it up here, is that it supports two cartridges at the same time, which after messing with this is absolutely brilliant. Because if you think about it, each one of these game packs has multiple games on it. So you can really load this thing up. It's designed to, you know, have a bunch of games accessible at all times. And uh, you'll see when I fire it up that it works really well. Underneath that, you'll find two multi-game cartridge packs and you'll notice that the packaging is purple. That's a little bit different than the red ones that they've released so far. They are using purple to let people know that these are actually the arcade versions of these games. And the red ones that they've released so far, those will be the console versions of uh, these games. So I thought that was really nice. Also, you'll notice that they are restarting the numbering of these with the arcade. So again, to not confuse uh, people who already have collections. Underneath that, this premium pack comes with a quick start guide in multiple languages, as well as two wired controllers. Now the Versus will support up to four controllers plugged into it. Uh, you don't have to necessarily use wired ones. If you have the little dongle, you can actually do the wireless ones. I'm gonna show that working here in a bit, as well as a USB power cable. Now there is no brick included with this, but that's pretty common with a lot of tech these days. They just assumed you already have one for your phone or your tablet. And you'll notice that there isn't an HDMI cable included in here, but you know, most people have many of those lying around. They're not expensive. And I assume that they probably did that to try to keep costs down. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the console itself, starting with the front. And like I showed previously, you can open up the flap there and insert up to two multi-game cartridges at once. And these are hot swappable too, which is really nice. You can either do it while it's powered off or while it's powered on. And I'll show that when it's running. There is a power button. And when you hold it down, you'll notice that there is a colored LED on the front there that shows that it's working as well as four USB ports on the front for controllers. On the back here, pretty basic stuff. You have the USB power in as well as the HDMI out. Now this does output in 1080p and I'm gonna show you a bunch of gameplay footage here pretty soon. And then right there is a manual reset button, which I'm not entirely sure why that is there. Maybe if a game locks up or something, but in my testing, I never had to use it because, well, the cartridges are hot swappable and you know most of these games you can just exit right out of it, but it's there if you need it. As for my thoughts on the controller, well, it is very similar to what they had on the handheld. Now, starting with the D-pad, I do think it's a little bit maybe more raised than the handheld. 
I mean, we're talking just by millimeters there, but as far as feel goes, again, it's very similar to what they had on the handheld. On the front of it, they did change it from the handheld. So you'll notice that it has two bumpers there for each side. So it has an L1 and an L2, R1, R2. So uh, I guess a little bit more support there, a little bit more variety. And again, you can map it to be kind of whatever you want. And the face buttons feel exactly the same. And then you'll notice in the center there is a menu button. So that will always take you back to the menu, allow you to do saves. You can go into some of the settings and change the display, things like that. And overall, it is fairly comfortable. I mean, they've rounded off the corners, which is nice. And it's definitely bigger than say, you know, a classic NES style controller. So for the most part, I think it's just okay. You know, it's, it's fine. Um, not really much to complain about there. And again, you don't even have to use it if you don't want to because you can use an Xbox 360 controller, which is great because then you can also have an analog thumbstick. So that can change up games quite a bit. And I know the Versa supports a wide range of the popular 8-bit Doe controllers. So I think people have a lot of options here. All right, so let's go ahead and power it on and take a look at its user interface. Now this has been updated to take advantage of the Versus and some of the things that it supports, but let's go ahead and jump into the settings. Under display and aspect ratio, there is a new option there that is specifically added for the Versus and that is pixel perfect mode. So you can choose either the original aspect ratio or uh, pixel perfect mode or full screen, depending on kind of what you prefer. And also I think probably the size of your television. Uh, what I found in my testing actually that I liked pixel perfect, but then I have a large 4K television. And so I didn't necessarily notice that the, the bezels were, you know, all around the display. I don't know, it, again, it's to taste. You also have three scan line options there. You have none, subtle, and strong. And here's an example of those scan lines. So on the left, you have no scan lines. In the center there, you have subtle, and then on the right, and then let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit easier to tell, but like I said, on the left, none, center, the very subtle, and then on the right, you have the strong ones. You can mess around with the bezels and there are some really cool ones there as well as turn on or off the scan lines. Another nice feature of the Versus is built in Wi-Fi support specifically for getting new system firmware. And then notice here on the system menu, there is map controller option. This is great if you want to remap any of the controllers that you use on this, including your own one. So uh, you'll see here that I have my trusty wired Xbox 360 controller, which I have had for years. Uh, the, the system just auto detected it, and then you can run through all the mappings. And then here's a retro bit wireless controller that I have. Now, the thing is the Evercade versus does not support Bluetooth internally. So you do have to use one of those USB dongles with it, but just plug it into one of the ports on the front and you'll see here that, yeah, the mapping detected it and it worked just fine. Oh yeah, and then check this out. On the settings menu, there is secret. And when you click that, it says enter a secret code. Now, I don't know what this necessarily used for. Uh, I reached out to them and asked them what they got planned for that. Is it gonna be a, a debug option or something? And they, they wouldn't tell me. They said it's gonna be used for multiple things over the life of the console. Uh, something tells me that it could be used maybe for cheat codes or maybe they could do a firmware update and I don't know, like add stuff to it. I have no idea, but they did say to, you know, stay tuned that they got plans for that, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay, so now it's time to play some games. But before I do that, I do wanna mention and kind of remind people sort of the point of all of this, because I think some people looking at this going, okay, like why would you get something like this over say just getting an emulator machine or something like that, you know? And I think the thing that really surprised a lot of us is that Evercade, the handheld tapped into the collector market in a way that I think surprised a lot of us because as you see here, these cartridges are physical, right? And they come with full color manuals. And keep in mind, these are fully licensed games, but more than that, what I've really enjoyed about the releases that they've done so far is that the, yes, they put out some of the kind of I don't know, the ones that you would expect, like say from Namco or Atari or, you know, stuff like that. But they've also focused on some indie titles or maybe some publishers that don't get enough love or maybe have been kind of forgotten over the ages. And so it's a really neat way 
to, I don't know, like preserve some of this stuff or maybe just kind of celebrate it. And so I just kind of want to mention that because I think that's the type of person who gets excited about something like this and really just kind of jumps into this ecosystem. With that said, let's go ahead and pop into cartridges because I know a lot of people, myself included, were really kind of curious how this was all going to work. Well, as you see here, what happens is that depending on the cartridges that you put in, whether it's one or two or any combination of those, well, it kind of reconfigures the main menu. And so by default, the menu system will display all of the games on both cartridges in alphabetical order. And you can see which cartridges are inserted at the top as well as a total number of games that you can currently play. But then notice at the bottom, you have show and also sort. And so right now we're showing both cartridges, but then you can just hit the X button and choose to show either cartridge one or cartridge two. And then under sort, it defaults to showing all the titles alphabetical, but then you can also sort them by the release date or you can sort them by the number of players the game supports. Again, that's the whole point of the verses is to have this console that multiple people can play at the same time on the couch. And then when you jump into a game, it defaults to the play button, but notice it also says last save there. That's because you can quick save on any game. And what I love about this is that if you just wanna immediately jump back into where you were, you just click last save. That's brilliant. And then check this out underneath that for every single game, it shows you the controls. Again, it's small things like that, that they really thought of. This honestly is something that for every single game that I captured footage for, I would always check out the controls. Again, it's so convenient to just have them right there on the screen, right when you're gonna start the game. And so that's the interface. And I gotta say, they kind of nailed it. I mean, it's really well thought out. It's not cluttered. It's not hard to navigate. I love how it reconfigures itself depending on the cartridges that you've inserted. Again, no complaints, it's brilliant. As for playing games, it's kind of what you would expect. I played a ton of different cartridges. I have a bunch of them in my collection and put in you know, pretty much every single cartridge I could think of, both uh, simple games as well as more complex games. And yeah, it played them all just fine. Now it's important to know that this is running emulation, right? So it's not a fancy FPGA. Uh, those often tend to be way more expensive. And you know, for this, for the base model at $100 with a controller and a game pack, there's just no way that they could actually do FPGA. So it is running emulation and specifically it's running it on a 1.5 gigahertz quad core processor. Uh, it has about a half a gig of RAM. It has four gigabytes of internal storage. Now, one of the interesting things about this is that they wanted to make sure that you could take your game packs and move between the verses and the handheld. So your save states actually save on the cartridges. So you can start a game, play it on the verses, move over to the handheld, play it there, save your game, and then go back and forth pretty seamlessly. And being that this thing is called the Evercade Versus, well, it was important to check out some multiplayer. You see my wife and I playing some two player games here. And as of right now, this is only couch co-op. So it's just meant to have people sitting on the couch with controllers in hand, looking up at the TV, you know, old school style. But they have indicated that they could potentially add online multiplayer in the future. Obviously the, the system does have Wi-Fi built into it. It's just that they didn't want to focus on it for the launch, but that could come in the future in say a firmware upgrade. One question that will come up about this is involving input latency and how much you can expect with a device like this. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the proper tools or equipment to do my own testing for this, but I did reach out to Blaze Entertainment and ask them what they're seeing on their end. And they basically said, you know, this is emulation. There will be some input lag inherently in a device like this, but they feel it's very similar to what people saw in the handheld and they try and do their best to reduce that as much as possible so that most people don't notice it. And I will say that has been my experience so far, but keep in mind, it is gonna depend on the type of controllers you use, whether they're wired or wireless, as well as your setup and your HD television and how much lag is also you know, with that. So there's a lot of variables there, but I did wanna mention it. The other thing I wanna mention, and you may have noticed it, that I said most of the multi-game cartridges work on this. 
Well, that's because there are two of them that do not, and they just happen to be the two Namco collections that originally came out for the handheld. And that is because those were specifically licensed for handheld. And for whatever reason, Blaze Entertainment has not been able to secure the license for the console. Uh, it's, I guess it's kind of a bummer, but honestly, you know, there are so many other of these packs out there that it's really not that big of a deal. Now, I was curious to see what would happen if I put it into the verses. And as you see here, it doesn't detect it at all. It just says no cartridge inserted, which I find kind of odd because it should probably put up some sort of message or something like that. I mean, if, if you didn't know that, if you didn't know that they didn't have a license for it, you might actually assume that it's not working correctly. You know, when every other pack works and this one doesn't, it probably should put up a message, I would think. But every other one that I put in there worked just fine as expected. So what are my final thoughts on the Evercade versus? Well, it really does feel like a natural progression and extension of the handheld. I mean, here they've put all this work into licensing all of these different collection of games and clearly people really love collecting them. And, you know, it's only natural that you would also want to be able to play those on your HD television. And it works really well. Now, I didn't test all 200 games that they've released for this, but of the ones I did, I never ran into any, you know, weird glitches or crashes. I didn't run into some of the sound issues that people had with the handheld. I mean, they played just fine. And the other thing I like about this is that they're reasonably priced, you know, $100 gets you the console, a controller, and a game pack, right? Often these game packs are just $20 a piece and you get multiple games included on every single one of them. So, you know, in this day and age when everything seems to be hundreds and hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, here's a system that anybody can jump into and start collecting. But I would love to know what you think about the Evercade Versus. Do you have the handheld version? Have you been collecting the game packs? please let me know down in the comments below. Also, I'll put a link to get more information down in the video description as well. And as always, guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.